guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, I am super excited to share this deck, guys. It's going to be played by David R. He is a really good pro Italian player, and he's going to be covering this deck, which I think you guys are going to love. Mega Knight Graveyard deck. And the cool thing about this deck, as we, I we're actually going to hop into a grand challenge. So let me get into the GC here. He's currently 9 and 1. I think he's already, yes, in a match. And dude, against Toby Spirit Hawk, the German. Uh, YouTuber, streamer, and pro player Toby, a really, really good player. So he's going to have his work cut out for him in the very first match here. But as I was saying about the deck, the cool thing and the reason that I think a lot of you guys are going to love it is that you can almost juke your opponent out. They're going to think you're playing, once they see either the Graveyard or the Mega Knight, whichever one you play first, they're probably going to take you as playing a different deck than you actually are. So it can be a surprise uh, in terms of the win condition in this deck. And I've seen that work out to David's benefit a lot of times when playing this deck. As a matter of fact, he's rattled off a bunch of Grand Challenge wins in a row with this deck. He's also pushed to top 300 global with this deck on ladder, so it can definitely work on ladder and, of course, in challenges at tournament level standard. The cool thing about it is you don't have to just rely on the Mega Knight like regular Mega Knight decks as being your big tank in the deck. You can rely on the Inferno Tower in case you're going up against a uh, P.E.K.K.A., right? Because the Mega Knight is great against Swarm and support cards and bridge spam cards, but he's not good against P.E.K.K.A.s or big beatdown pushes, double prints and, and giant pushes. So you have that Inferno Tower as well. And I think you guys are going to love the defensive versatility of this deck. And as you can see here, we get a Mega Knight uh, hit on that left tower there. We get some Dark Goblin damage on the right tower, but Toby's able to get a lot of damage onto our left tower as well. And now we have to stop this push, but not before. Ooh, okay, the Barbarian gets one swing, but a smart barbarian barrel there by David there to kind of mitigate the damage as we have about 10 seconds left in a uh, single elixir on this match so guys again if you don't have the barbarian barrel you don't have it leveled up yet of course you can get by with log just fine in this deck in a matter of, as a matter of fact I think that log is still a great card I was saying that in my my ranking video yesterday talking about cards that never die I included log in there and I think that log is still a great card despite the out of the prevalence and maybe the borderline OP-ness of the Barbarian Barrel. So here comes a P.E.K.K.A. in the left lane, but as you guys saw there, and shame on me for not even picking up on that important kind of interaction that, that changed this match, is a big graveyard push there with a Mega Knight in the graveyard. You might want to rewind and check that out on the right lane. It was a really smart and aggressive play. Once that David saw that Toby cycled that P.E.K.K.A. in back of the left side, he went right in with the Mega Knight, Bats, Graveyard, Graveyard Poison, so a lot of Elixir devoted to the right lane, and then he figured he could just defend against the P.E.K.K.A. with the Inferno Tower, which he did. So now another Graveyard goes down on the right tower, Dark Goblin's doing a good job for Toby cleaning up both against the Mega Knight and helping out against the Graveyard, but he does have Poison as his last card, guys. So let's see, he can easily just finish this off with a poison, needs a little bit more damage, needs to defend this first. So we have a Dark Goblin, our Dark Goblin place to intercept that Battle Rim. There goes the Mega Knight. I like this, David playing very, very safe here. Now he gives the good game, Spirit Goblin connected, poison can come down, and right tower is down, and just like that first match, I was a little worried when I saw Toby Spirit Hawk, but David picks up the victory there with this really, really cool Mega Knight Graveyard deck. Let's go ahead and hop into match number two. All right, guys, here we go. He is into a match, and here we go. We are a clean, or well, kind of clean, 10 and 1 into match number 11 in this grand challenge against Shuai from Dark Alliance. So, you guys saw it in the first match, right? Like, the surprise, the first time that he dropped that graveyard. You know that Toby was not expecting a graveyard there when we hit opposite lane with the Mega Knight Bats. He probably figured, okay, Mega Knight Bats, I can handle that. I can defend against that, but not Mega Knight Bats Graveyard Poison. You know, seldom is a defender going to be equipped to, to stop that. And here we go, right off the bat against Shuai here. We go down with a graveyard and a poison. So that was just a naked graveyard play there by David to start this out only about 40 seconds into the match. Now he has to deal with these two remaining musketeers. He's going to bar barrel that left musketeer. That's going to take care of that. Now we have a bandit, a barbarian, and a musketeer. We're going to use goblin gang. 
and bats, and we mitigate any damage. We didn't take any damage onto that right lane. Just really smart defense there by David, and a very, very aggressive early uh, graveyard there. Not used to seeing that early of a naked graveyard play, but it actually worked out again for him as he did have poison in hand, and now the opponent decides to pump up here. How is he going to handle this? We go with the Dark Goblin immediately at the bridge. That allows us to cycle out the poison, and we drop that poison onto the pump there. Of course, against the Three Musketeer player, never want them to pick up that early elixir lead going into overtime no matter what deck you're playing it can be incredibly difficult so against three muskies uh, I had Royal on the channel playing Golem about maybe four or five videos ago. He gave a lot of good tips, and one tip that he gave was against three muskies, he's always going to answer pumps in single elixir time, and then double elixir time, especially being a Golem player, he's okay with ignoring them, but in single elixir time, you have to answer in the opinion of Royal, who might be the best player in the game right now. So here we go. It's going to be a Mega Knight against that Charging Bandit Dark Album back there to support. The Mega Knight jumps on those skeletons, doesn't want anything to do with those skeletons he jumps down and now we get a connection on the right tower the power of the newly buffed mega knight and the newly buffed dark goblin in tandem there takes down that right tower with about 45 seconds left to go in this match now we have the defensive inferno tower kind of setting up and that's something that i noticed on david's earlier matches that we didn't record is he's a big fan of once he has that lead just setting up with that defensive inferno tower especially if he has the elixir advantage so now we hear again with a mega knight at the bridge another Another thing that I noticed off of his gameplay here in this deck is he will use the Mega Knight quite a bit. Oftentimes, even if it's not guaranteed to return the value, say against a solo battle ram, I noticed that he'll sometimes just use the Mega Knight. That way he can have something going in the opposite lane as a counter push. Bandit Charge does connect on that right tower. However, we're able to mitigate the damage with the Barbarian Barrel. Now we have the Dark Goblin setting up behind that Mega Knight. Barbarian Barrel comes down. Not enough time. That's going to be GG. Two quick and easy looking victories. At least he makes them look easy, right? Let's go ahead and hop into the next match here. I'll only edit out if there's a long wait time. So let's go ahead and check. And uh, guys, I hope so far you're a fan of this deck. I, I saw him have success with it, and we are already into the match, by the way. I saw him have success with it on Twitter. He kept posting about it and posting about it, and then eventually I was like, wait a second here. I guess it really works. I guess the graveyard com combined with the Mega Knight after all the buffs, Inferno Tower, Dark Goblin, Mega Knight in this deck, I think that graveyard's actually in a good spot. And even if your opponent does have poison, you have enough swarm where you can just get around the poison, whether it be baiting it out with the graveyard or just baiting it out with a Goblin Gang and Mega Knight push or a just a big swarm push, a Dark Goblin and Bats push. So there's enough potential in this deck that even if they do have a lot of spells in their deck you can still easily avoid them using the cards here and just like I talked about guys another kind of an aggressive defensive Mega Knight there is something that you guys might want to go ahead and pick up on in your play style and he's going against another P.E.K.K.A. deck here so another kind of difficult matchup but like we said earlier if they have the P.E.K.K.A. it doesn't automatically mean a loss P.E.K.K.A.'s everywhere in the game right now she's one of the most popular cards and this deck is built to be able to handle her despite her being a hard counter to our Mega Knight. So here we go again. Dark Goblin actually does get a, a quick lock on our, to our tower, and David gives the oops. We're going in with the uh, Spear Goblins left over from the Goblin Gang. Bats are going to be able to take care of those. The big question is, what are the remaining cards in Mark Wan's deck here? The problem is, is he has Dark Goblin, he has Bats, he has Skeletons, he has Log, which are all good graveyard counters, and he has the P.E.K.K.A., which, of course, is a very good counter to the Mega Knight. So, so far, he has a really good counter deck to the deck that we are running right now. Again, we go in with an aggressive defensive Mega Knight, and then we're going to put a combo with the Bats immediately, trying to do some more damage to that P.E.K.K.A. Dark Goblin comes down, and we go ahead and we take the poison value there against the P.E.K.K.A., doing a little bit more damage against the Tower, and of course, taking care of that Dark Goblin. So not bad. And then we have the Inferno Tower ready. Of course, he has E-Dragon. E-Dragon, another kind of difficult card to deal with in this deck, uh, but we have, because since we do have the Inferno Tower, but that's the good thing about the Inferno Tower versus, again, the Inferno Dragon in this deck we can just kind of plant it back there and let it do its thing and uh, here we go with the mega knight again defensively against that battle ram and here comes the gra the graveyard the pekka is going to intercept the mega knight before it actually gets the attention no i stand corrected it does have the attention of the tower poison comes down we're getting a lot of nice rng with that graveyard doing a lot of damage taking it to around 1000 hp so a little over a third hp left on that right 
tower for us. Now we have to defend here again. These pushes can be really difficult to deal with, these big battle ram pushes. And again, it comes down here and it does a lot of damage, those barbarians, to our right tower. So with about five seconds left in regulation here, guys, it's really anybody's game. 1047 damage remaining. And here it goes, the last spell, or the big spell, the last card is lightning. That could give David an opportunity here. Things are not looking great, and the packet comes down. But this is, you can bet, this is going to be a do-or-die push for him uh, in all likelihood. He's going to unload everything he has. He has the, he, the Goblin Gang to support in tank for just by a little bit of time for that Mega Knight. The Graveyard comes down. The Poison comes down. Nice Poison, just narrowly avoiding the Dark Goblin there. Barbarian can't clean him up, but the Skeletons still get enough damage. The Poison comes down. Tower is down, and there it is. A clean 12 in one GC, a flawless three and zero. I'm gonna ask him, and I'm gonna tell him, well, geez, well done, man. And I'm gonna tell, ask him if he wants to do a ladder match. And if he says yes, I will come back to you guys because another quick GC video. All right, guys, he did agree to do a ladder match to finish off this video. Again, he is, I think, around 250-ish in the world right now, and we're going against Abu Al Walid. So let's see how this deck can perform on ladder. And he starts out with a Dark Prince in the back. So who knows? what this deck can be. I'm seeing a little bit more Dark Prince out there in the meta, but it, it's it's too early to say if he will be a, a, maybe a viable meta card, and it, it looks like a double Prince deck, so we can only imagine it's probably a, a giant deck, I assume, right, guys? The old uh, giant double Prince and a wizard at the bridge here. That's going to be only one thing we can do there. It's going to be a Mega Knight in perfect timing. No hesitation on that Mega Knight from David's part. He goes ahead and takes care of the Prince, and then we have the surviving Spear Goblins, which actually helped out a real lot there in that defensive sequence. Now we have the Mega Knight, and that is the power of the buff to the Mega Knight right there, guys. He got that final hit on those Barbarians, and what that's going to do is allow David to not have to use any Elixir to defend against those remaining Barbarians. That final hit there with that hit speed increase. Now this is the first graveyard of the match here. A really nice kind of uh, mini counter push there with the Barbarian Barrel, the Graveyard, and the Poison there. So an 11 Elixir push uh, from David, but he ends up walking away with over a thousand damage off of that tower so certainly he'll take it there and then the pump comes down for the opponent how is he going to deal with the pump seeing that he just used the poison it looks like he's just going to hit him with a little bit of swarm here he has the goblin gang he has the bats what is he going to do just going to graveyard this pump and again we talked about this you really have to respond to pumps in single elixir and he didn't have his grave his poison excuse me in cycle so these skeletons will survive oh no do you see oh man that one one bad skeleton activates king tower and you guys i don't have to tell you this already that was a big blow to david they're really unfortunate uh in terms of luck there usually you don't see skeletons from that point activate king tower but hey he was a uh, a rambunctious little fella and he gets to the king tower so it's definitely not what we want to have happen again i don't have to tell you guys how difficult it is to connect with graveyards after you have that king tower activated activated king tower is probably the best against graveyard decks so certainly a huge swing in this match for the opponent here and we're going to rely again on the inferno tower to hopefully stop this pekka but the zap comes down a nice barbarian barrel that's going to kite the pekka back up towards that ice wizard and again it looks like we're going to go and try to get a little bit of chip damage with the, jar the dark goblin we do in the right lane and then we reload with the, uh, the the goblin gang again so we're doing a decent amount of damage poison comes down i'm starting to wonder if that might have been an over committing poison uh, well, we have a lot of elixir left, but the opponent has a ton of elixir left and a pump. And by the way, guys, we didn't even mention this, but it's not a giant deck. It's an old school PPP Pekka Prince Dark Prince deck, which we haven't really seen in a long while. Dark Prince gets to that Dark Goblin, and I was all worried for nothing. We were able to not take any damage at all in that push. And here comes another reload with the Inferno Tower. The opponent's coming in with a Prince, and then the Pekka reloaded in the back. The Prince does make a charge against that, ooh, that Inferno Inferno Tower. That's going to be difficult now because the Pekka's coming down the lane. Our Inferno Tower is not in hand or in cycle. We have a Battle Ram going down the left lane. We have a Dark Prince going down the right lane. We're going to go ahead and uh, Dark Goblin. We have the Mega Knight's going to intercept all those troops at the bridge. This is going to be a difficult push to stop here in the right lane, guys. Uh, we have a full health tower. Pekka is down. 
Dark Prince and Prince go down. We have another Mega Knight there at the bridge. The opponent is none too happy about it. Another Dark Goblin kind of reloaded there. The, the, look at this, though. Unfortunately, because we have the Barbarian Barrel and not the Log, we do take a connection hit from that Battle Ram onto our right tower with about two minutes left. Another aggressive poison here against this Ice Wizard, and that be, allows the opponent to go ahead and cycle, uh, cycle up again with another pump in the back. They have two minutes left. A good job not, uh, you know, staying with the pumps by the opponent. As long as they can defend here, they're probably looking pretty, but they're not defending them that well, I guess. 567 damage left on that right tower, so it's going to take another big graveyard push, but we're going to have to defend against this first. We drop that Mega Knight. He's going to intercept both of those charges, absorb both of them, but now he has to go up against the P.E.K.K.A. We have another Inferno Tower reloaded here, and it's kind of a rinse and repeat, and another big aggressive poison. I don't know about these poisons, guys. I am not anywhere near the player that he is, but this is going to be difficult to stop, especially with the wizard back there. We can't drop any of our swarm troops in hand because the wizard now is attached to our right uh, uh, princess tower, and we have the dark goblin down, but no! Oh man, that wizard in the relentless double prince push along with the battle ram and the P.E.K.K.A. in the right lane. We had the tower down to 255 HP, but it wasn't enough. Oh well, he played incredibly well there despite the matchup, of course. It was was so close so a huge shout out to David make sure you check him out on Twitter I'll include his Twitter handle for you guys in the description below along with his player profile thanks to statsreal.com so guys that's gonna do it for this video I hope you enjoyed it this was a good one it's a really really fun deck to play wishing you guys nothing but success with it a huge shout out to Bren Chong my YouTube partner check out his information as well guys thanks so much for watching and as always take care guys